The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the Arise to Success show. I'm your host on this show. My name is Jihad. Throughout this show, dear listeners, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send those on 0779481822. Our guest today is Shaheen Salim, who is the owner and designer of a British skirt boutique called Shaheen Salim, which was founded in 2011 in London. After identifying a gap in the market for viable options of high-quality skirts that catered to women of all backgrounds, the Shaheen Salim brand was born. Inspired by a desire to meet the individual needs and demands of customers, Shaheen's vision of offering classic fashion trends that are timeless is at the heart of her brand. Shaheen, lovely having you with us today and thank you for coming all the way from London. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you, and thank you for the invite. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. So, Shaheen, if we start with, if you can tell us more about yourself and your motivation in starting your Shaheen Salim Salim brand. So, I think, well, I'm the founder, the designer of Shaheen Salim, and the way this brand came about was from my own, um, kind of like my own um, needs, I'd mm. say. Um, I was working in the city. I, uh, as a Muslim woman, saw uh, lots of women uh, come into work wearing suits and, you know, formal uh, business wear attire. And um, I wanted to dress accordingly. Um, I felt that what was out there in the market didn't actually appeal Um, and suit my needs um, I felt that I was constantly um, wearing things that just didn't make me feel comfortable whilst working I felt that um, there was essentially a gap mm. um, where I couldn't get a maxi skirt that um, it was comfortable to wear but also modest um suiting my um work wear environment um you know it's all about how you look uh, mm. when you feel confident you perform well um and so yeah i decided to create maxi skirts mm. um to fulfill that need that i had so um Yeah, it's all about making sure that um, I've got a skirt that's got some design and style to it. Um, it's got, um, you know, me uh, able to walk properly in it because mm. some of the skirts you see in, in the market may be too tight and restricting. Um, so, yeah, all of that kind of got incorporated into my like needs and, and the design process. But Alhamdulillah, um, yeah, that that was what, made me think there's something mm. there that I need that's not already out there in the mainstream um, market and I think I need to go ahead and make it mm. and I'm sure there's other women out there that are probably um, needing this and I don't know if that's the right word but probably suffering too from the lack of that being mm. available so yeah great so it was a need for yourself and then you decided to make it into your brand as well yeah Wow, yeah. that's amazing. I love that. And, you know, I've seen your skirts myself and I love the designs of them. So, mashallah, you did really well there. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I was wondering, in terms of your journey of identifying the gaps in the, in the market and identifying or trying to meet the needs of the different individuals and customers, can you tell us more about that journey? Because I'm assuming that they t this takes quite a, a lot of work, right? Yeah. So, um, I think, again, the... The gap that I had identified, it was from my own experience and from my own learning. Mm. I was the customer, mm. you know. Um, um, so initially, it was, like I say, designing a skirt that was modest. It had some style to it. It, it had features that supported the workwear environment. And just to give you some example, uh, my skirts don't show the legs like mm. you find maxi skirts, but there's a long slit mm. at the back. So you find yourself wearing footless tights or leggings and and sometimes that makes it really uncomfortable to wear and actually you find you've got to go up a size so mm. I made sure that it's all closed so um my my skirts have a um a closed skirt vent so that's what you call it mm. um so you can take a nice wide stride mm. um uh you've also got pockets for instance oh, um you know when I worked um in retail I had to have like a, a key for my locker Mm. Uh, on me all the time so 
it was annoying how, you know, only trousers offered that. So I made sure that when I designed the skirt, that that, that skirt had a pocket there. Yeah. Um, and then I also ensured that the skirts were long enough, that they were covering the ankle. Uh, there was an invisible zip. At the time, I remember the skirts... Um, out there, this was when I was designing, um, had s- zips that were actually quite um, um, out there. So, you know, you'd have a normal skirt and then it would have a, a very large, bold metal mm-hmm. zip that was clearly visible for everyone to see either Mm. on the side or on the back of the skirt and personally I thought that was not suitable for something you'd wear when you go to like a meeting Mm. you know with your your work colleagues so again I ensured that there was invisible zips incorporated into the the design of the skirt um I made sure that the fabric was uh, stretchy I made sure um you you have women who wear tummy tuckers for instance you know I made sure that the skirt had a little bit of stretch to it mm. so those weeks where you're feeling a little bit more curvier or you want to go out and eat with your friend at lunchtime you don't need to be worried that you've got this you know skirt that's mm. really holding you back and for the rest of the afternoon whilst working you're not able to breathe or yeah. you, you know you have that uncomfortable feeling yeah. throughout the day um so i, I made sure that the the, the, the fabrics had stretch mm. um i also incorporated um, some extra fabric into the pencil skirt, mm-hmm. uh, which basically meant that um, if if you're taller than the average woman, mm-hmm. you could actually um, open up the skirt and make oh. it uh, longer wow. to suit your needs. Um, the, the skirts are tailored, um, so um, it was specifically for workwear. You can wear them for casual and evening wear, um, but. Uh, I think when you when you say um, identifying a gap, I mean, I, I try to fulfill that gap by introducing tailored skirts. Mm. Um, and that in itself creates a gap because what I'm doing is I'm limiting the skirt options there for the modest wearer. Mm. Um, some women prefer a more relaxed, casual fit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that that creates a gap in itself mm. uh, so I guess there's more for me to grow on but mm. um, it, it, it just allows me to develop and, and grow the, 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 the yeah. skirt range but um, so initially that was all of my findings from what I couldn't see in the market mm. those were the gaps that I noticed that the average skirt doesn't have and then in regards to like meeting those needs for those individuals and customers I think what I've learned from our umma uh, mashallah uh, we comprise of women of all different backgrounds so different races different cultures we have different body shapes Mm. so I think um, I had to consider that and um, what I did was, um, as I mentioned earlier, the the, um, the skirts have been designed, uh, one of the skirts has been designed to actually give you extra fabric if you need it oh. and actually shorten it if you mm. want it. Mm. So um, I know when, when I say different body shapes, um, from my research and understanding, uh, South Asian women tend to be um, shorter uh, mm. compared to, uh, say, um, uh, Arab women who tend to be on average uh, slightly taller mm. um, and, I, and I've and i learnt that from being at all these events and pop-ups mm. so I think I, I did know that the skirt was being designed so that it could accommodate a size a, pot- a particular body shape but um, I did factor in the need to expand it or shorten it um, lengthwise so that's one thing I try to do when when you say, uh, how did I try to meet, you know, mm. the different needs of that individual customer? I think also... Um, so just you... to remind you, Shaheen, that we've got about 40 seconds before we go for a break for Maghrib. So okay. you've got some time, but thought I'll, let you, I'll let you just know. Okay. So 30 seconds now. Yeah, um, I also just wanted to make the point that um, when you talk about individual needs for each customer, mm. you've got to consider that everyone's got their own personal likes, yeah. uh, preferences. It's all led by fashion. You, and, and my product is sensitive to that. You mm. know, d- people prefer different styles mm-hmm. of fashion as well. So um, it's quite hard. It's quite hard in that sense. But yeah.
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Arise to Success show. Um, just a reminder that we have Shaheen Salim with us today, who's the owner and designer of a British skirt boutique called Shaheen Salim, which was founded in 2011 in London. After identifying a gap in the market for viable options for high quality skirts that catered for women of all backgrounds, the Shaheen Salim brand was born. Inspired by a desire to meet the individual needs and the demands of customers, Shaheen's vision of offering classic fashion trends that are timeless is at the heart of the Shaheen brand. So Shaheen, um, thank you again for being with us today. Um, and we we're just before the break, we we're talking about the kind of skirts that you've designed and um, the how you identified the gaps. And you actually were talking about the, you know, the kind of things that you had to really pay attention to. And I thought that was very, very thoughtful of you to think about the pockets, to think about, you know, customers who are taller, customers who are short in order for you to make sure that you cater for all the different needs of the customers. And you've got a really good attention to detail, I must, I must say, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so we didn't get to finish before the break. So go ahead, carry on about this. Uh, I, I think the the last point I was trying to make um, was regarding um, the last question. Uh, how do you try to meet the needs mm. of those different individual customers? Um, and I, I was um, just highlighting that um, it's um, also down to personal preferences and what you like um and that's led by fashion mm. that's that's occurring for the year um or i'd say it's the styles that you want to incorporate into your wardrobe um so mm. yeah i guess my product is sensitive to those um mm. things mm. um but yeah uh, i think it's key to understand that for your product and yeah. service what 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 is affecting it um yeah. it's not just the customer but there's other um variables that are outside your control yeah. um so yeah I'm, I'm, my my product is sensitive to what's happening on the catwalk mm. you know and what, what's fashionable at the moment you know um what what style and um um looks are in at the moment so, mm. yeah. Great, Michelle. And I love how you said as well earlier, earlier that although you identified gaps in the market, um, you still see some gaps and you're always looking for improvement and how to grow. And I thought that was a really important um, area that you've mentioned because it's, you know, it, it's great to feel that we're excelling on something. But then how do we always, you know, kind of like review? How can we grow? How can we improve it? How can we better ourselves, you know, even for ourselves as well? So that was a, a really good point and great point you mentioned there. I was wondering as well, you know, when we start a business or do anything, you know, um, in life, sometimes we go through struggles. Sometimes we go through the wins, right? So for your business, can you tell us more about that journey? What were the struggles? What were the wins? And how did you overcome if there were, you know, challenges? I'm sure there were, you know, we always go through um, some challenges here and there. How did you manage to overcome them? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go through my wins mm. and then I'll touch on my struggles and then talk about uh, how I... Um, like addressed mm. those I think for me in terms of like the wins that I've got from my journey is alhamdulillah I've been grateful to work with Muslim businesses mm. uh, wherever I can I've tried to connect with somebody from the ummah mm. um, I think first and foremost you know we should do that yeah there's lots of skills and lots of knowledge in our ummah that we should really tap into and give you know the new generation also a chance um so alhamdulillah i've been grateful in that sense um with that thought process i've had a logo designer for instance Mm. who helped me create my my brand logo and and that that for me is a big win Mm. i did initially reach out to people um uh, that were you know outside of the ummah and it it just didn't satisfy me i just thought how do i connect with the ummah because this Mm. is a product that's meant to be modest and it's going to cater to their needs you know me as a customer as well Mm. i mean i wear my skirts whenever i can um I, i wanted to make sure that i can reach my customer and understand them better and I think whoever I've interacted with I've shared my story with Mm. and they've put their kind of like two pence to it and Mm. advised me on how they think it would work Mm. whether it's the logo whether you know it's the design um so I think that's one of the ones that I I appreciate I'm grateful for alhamdulillah Mm -hmm. um 
Another example I think I should mention is the manufacturing. Mm. Um, I was grateful that I was able to um, manufacture in Turkey. Mm. Um, it's quite hard in Turkey. Um, you don't get a lot of manufacturing uh, manufacturers offering ha- um, small, medium order quantities. Right. The MOQs tend to be quite high. Mm. Um, so, alhamdulillah, I was grateful. Like, my supply chain, so to speak, mm. is halal. Mm. I, I'm proud of that. Like, even the packaging components um, were manufactured in Turkey. Um, sure. I think also another good win for me is um, I've networked mm. within the Ummah. Mm. Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, over the last, what, 10 years, uh, we've really picked up Mm. on that um i've connected with women in um muslim win- women groups mm-hmm. i've connected with um um businesses out there that are really trying to bring the ummah together muslim mm. networks like um emerald network that's a mm. big one they do mm. lots of events and i've been again um fortunate that i knew of them i've been going to the events i've been connecting mm. with other individuals whatever their journey is mm. um and by connecting with other people that are in either like an entrepreneurial journey mm. or just you know connecting with people for work purposes it it really does give you the information you need for your business when you're starting up so i think those are the wins that i really appreciate and mm. i'm grateful for alhamdulillah um in terms of struggles Mm. So um, manufacturing, I think, was one of my struggles initially. Uh, And like I said, it was because it's very hard to find a manufacturing unit that does small minimum order quantities. Mm. Um, I went to initially China. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Italy. Mm. Then I explored Slovenia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Didn't go ahead with that one. Um, Then I did some... um, prototyping here in the UK Mm. and then I was able to um, find this Turkish manufacturer Mm. so I think manufacturing is quite hard Mm. finding the right manufacturer is very difficult especially as a small business because you can't afford to purchase stock in thousands Mm. I mean if you've got the budget and you're able to then that's great Um, but Mm. in the absence of that kind of you know, money and that budget, you've got to be very mindful of um, what you're going to get from the manufacturer. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, getting manufacturing units um, that can cater to that small demand is mm. quite hard. Uh, you might find one, but they don't cater to your fabric, for instance. Um, they perhaps um, focus on, you know, woolen products and they specialise in crochet, for instance, mm. you know. So it, it's um, they are out there, but I think there's a lot of um, researching and going to events and exhibitions. I've been to quite a few, you know, I went to Fashion SVP, I went to Make It British, uh, Text Premium, uh, the London Textile Fair, that's a very good one, mm. um, and Pure London um, is a big one, Um and this one based in Birmingham, but apologies, I can't remember. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's lots of events that happen regarding, you know, uh, businesses that want to interact with manufacturers. Mm. And you've just got to go out there and actually just yeah. go through all of them and vet them and understand um, who's going to suit, you know, yes. your, your, your needs and requirements. I think the other struggle that I've had, and this is what I'm dealing with at the moment, mm-hmm. it's... Um, Branding, advertising, marketing, um, essentially selling your product. Uh, All about, you know, developing uh, and growing yourself so that you you can make sales. Mm. I think that one's, all those words, (laughs) those those (laughs) skills and those departments um, are key to your success. Once you've got your product out out from the the manufacturing unit, um, it's, you know, the way you advertise, the way you have your branding, the way you pitch your your product to mm. your customer, that that can make you or break you. Mm. So for me, that, that's been a struggle. I'm still learning. Um, but again, you've got access to free information online. You mm. know, I'm constantly reading and watching YouTube and uh, understanding exactly how they relate because they are quite interlinked. Mm. Um, you can get a coach, for instance. You know, I, mm. I've also explored that. Um, and I think when you're looking at 
um, understanding, you know, branding, advertising, marketing and how to sell, you're also um, better off engaging with people in a network to understand who's got those skills because you actually might find there's a small business that's great at advertising and they need somebody like yourself to give them, uh, you know, a shot. Mm essentially uh, a try mm. um uh, uh, and uh, uh, um uh, an agreement that mm. that can help start them off but then aids your need as well your 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 um your yeah. work uh, or task on hand yeah. so yeah you you'll find that actually you need to procure a service and um there's probably a specialist in your network or somebody knows of them mm. uh so as long as you're asking you know, the groups you're in, or the, you know, the network community that you engage with, um, send out like, you know, a message or a post or, you know, uh, connect with somebody on LinkedIn. And you'll find that somebody somewhere can mm. help. Mm. Uh, that's what I've learned over the last um, six to eight months. Mm. Um, and it's worked. Yeah. Um, just to give you an example, my manufacturer came from actually going to somebody in my network Mm. um, and then they were able to give me a name Um, I spoke to this individual the the manufacturer owner um, I think it was uh, one year in summer Mm -hmm. that person didn't get back to me Mm. and then um, that person who gave me the name um, actually connected with me again a few months down the line to say oh how did it go you know did you Mm. speak to so and so and um they actually nudged me to reach back to Mm, that, you mm. know, reach out to that um, manufacturer again and ask them, um, you know, are you available? Can you take an order of this kind of quantity? And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Mm. it was written for that time. It was written for that moment. And that manufacturer, the owner, actually responded to me. Mm. And and then I was able to, yeah, do a a production there. Mm. Um, So, yeah, you you don't really there's people there that you you know who might know somebody yes. and they can address the marketing concern that you have or yeah. can probably probably put you in touch with somebody who's looking after sales it might be a different industry but the principles mm. still apply and, and that's your learning yeah. you know you take that and you can do something with it for your business absolutely and thank you for the detailed response <laughs> mashallah so like and i've noticed that networking you brought it up quite a lot right and that's because mashallah you you, you can see the um, the uh, positive impact it had on you, how it helped you, how it supported you. And I just want to also add that this is not just a business level, but also as a social connection for individuals. For example, our dear listeners who are listening to us who don't have businesses, you know, for social connection. It's a support system that we have, yeah. right? So definitely for business, and I can completely relate to that um, based on what you're saying, for example, network with somebody, you can find somebody to do a logo, for example, to do this, to do that. So networking has is it is really, really helpful, but also to our dear listeners um, who are listening to us and think, well, I don't have a business. In terms of a social interaction, that is very important even for our mental health to Agreed. interact with individuals, yeah. to have that support system. So that's been a great point um, that you've highlighted them. And we're just going to go for a break in less than a minute. So I'm just going to quickly remind our dear listeners that we have Shaheen Salim with us today, who's the owner and designer of a British skirt boutique called Shaheen Salim, which was founded in 2011 in London. After identifying a gap in the market for viable options of high quality skirts that catered to women of all backgrounds, the Shaheen Salim brand was born. So our dear listeners, uh, we have been discussing so far um, Shaheen's journey into her business, her struggles, her wins, and what she also recommends um, in order to deal with some of the obstacles that she has experienced. So dear listeners, we are going to go for a short break. break. This is Inspire FM Luton on 105.1. Please do stay tuned. We have a lot more to discuss after the break. So we'll see you shortly, inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum, this is Atif Nawaz. Listen to Inspire FM shows in your time by heading over to inspirefm.org or listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Arise to Success show. We have Shaheen Salim with us today, who's the owner and designer of a British skirt boutique called Shaheen Salim, which was founded in 2011 in London. After identifying a gap in the market for viable options of high quality skirts that catered to women of all backgrounds, the Shaheen Salim brand was born. Inspired by a desire to meet the individual needs and demands of customers, Shaheen's vision of offering classic fashion trends that are timeless is at the heart of her brand. Dear listeners, 
listeners, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send those on 0779481822. So, Shaheen, before the break, we'll be discussing the scarce designs that you have, how you had to kind of take into account the different needs of the customers and, you know, your attention to detail, mashallah, in creating um, the skirts that kind of can cater for different needs in terms, for example, taller individuals, shorter individuals and different shapes and so on. We also talk about the win. We talked about the wins of your business as well as your struggles and how you've overcome those um, struggles as well. And now we're going to move into about you, the journey of Shaheen Salim, the brand going, you know, from 2011 until 2023 now. So if you can tell us more about that journey and how far has it gone from when it started to now? Um, yeah, so alhamdulillah, the journey is still going. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm still committed to learning. Yeah. I'm still um, trying to understand how I can improve uh, selling, for instance. And I'm still understanding, you know, branding, marketing, advertising, you know, how to sell and uh, also look at how the business can develop. Um, So it's, you know, um, able to reach out to those customers and fulfill those uh, needs. Um, I think in terms of um, what happens now on my in my journey, in terms of, you know, I've got my stock um, and now it's all about selling. Mm. Um, for me, over the last year, it's it's all been about doing events and exhibitions. Um, when you do pop up events, uh, that in itself is a is a big experience. Mm. Um, you are learning um, from from selling in person you're trying to drive that online traffic mm. um it's it's very different to what you do when you're trying to sell online uh, yeah. you know you might use google adwords and you know um you know you optimize your seo for instance yeah um you have a lot of ad campaigns from google and instagram and all the other social media accounts so um that that's very different to when you're you know at an event you you've actually got a potential customer you know coming up to you asking all the questions that you probably see as gold nuggets actually Mm. you're picking up so much from that conversation you don't realize so Mm. for me it's all about learning about that customer learning how to sell um and um like i say you can only do so much online Mm. grassroots activities like these are amazing it's like you know you you, you're you're at an event you're sharing your leaflets you know that in itself teaches you suburb you know having to stand there patiently you know engage with people and some walk by and really don't want to know what you're interested in Mm. so those are all uh, skills and you know learnings that you um, develop Mm. as part of that uh, work activity I think um, working with small businesses is also a good experience Mm -hmm. I'd say um, you know I've recently um, uh, had the opportunity to work with uh, a modest um, stylist Mm. Um, I was able to work with this um, individual to create content and that that as well has been an experience because sometimes you have a vision you have a style you have a design in mind and you you have it pictured in a certain way and mm. then when you speak to a stylist their take and their their way of presenting your product it might be completely different mm. um alhamdulillah it's been great um with a modest stylist I work with, it, it, it's um, it's taught me how to communicate as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's also a learning I've had from doing these um, events at these exhibitions. Um, I think the one thing that I'm learning at the moment in my journey is consistency. Um, I've realised when I do my tasks um, on a regular basis, even if they're small mm-hmm. tasks, mm-hmm. Um, I'm able to move forward. Mm. Um, I find that if I give myself a task, um, I somehow, I don't know why, make a, a mission and a half out of it. Mm. And it just seems like a, a big task that I don't know where to start. Yep. And you get overwhelmed. Yep. Um, so these are the kind of things you do to yourself as um, a business owner because you've got multiple hats on. Yep. You're not just the... The, the designer or the owner of the company, you know, you're doing 
um, finance. You know, mm. you have to submit your your, your accounts for mm. the year. You know, you've got to also um, think of that content idea for that reel that you want. Yeah. You've got to make sure um, you've got you know the right camera to capture the video, and you've got to edit your video. Mm. Um, you know, if you're looking at working with small businesses, you're actually HR, aren't mm. you? Because you're having to set up some sort of agreement and 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 make sure it's fair for them and fair for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of suburb, there's a lot of uh, consistency mm. that um, you need to make sure you're practicing. Mm. Um, and yeah, that, that's where I am at the moment. Mm. <laughs> Mashallah, and, and you mentioned a really good point as well in terms of, you know, being a business owner. You do so much, right? And, you know, if we have work, for example, we have one specific role, right? But as business owner, you have various roles that you have to do. And I'm relating this to parents, mothers, you know, fathers. They have so yeah. much to do as well. So what I wanted to add here is self-care. Self-care is very important to make sure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can continue this work. This is something I myself neglected and I thought the more you do, the more you produce, right? But then um, I heard um, a sheikh once saying that um, his father actually, who's not a Muslim, actually told him, we are called human beings so that we are, we be, not we do, right? So we need to be, we need to take care of ourselves because the more we take care of ourselves, the more we can produce. So I just wanted to add that there. And that's something I kind of talk about in, in several shows as well. I kind of add it in there, which, you know, it, because it's quite important. So it's kind of a reminder to us and to um, everyone who's listening to us as well, inshallah, um, can benefit from this. Um, and I'm just going to quickly, just in case um, any listeners um, have joined lately, so I'm just going to remind our dear listeners, we have Shaheen on the show today, who is the owner and designer for British skirt boutique called Shaheen Salim, which was founded which was founded in 2011 in London. After identifying a gap in the market for viable options of high-quality skirts that catered to women of all backgrounds, the Shaheen Salim brand was born. Um, our dear listeners, if you have any questions um, or comments on any specific questions to Shaheen, please feel free to send those on our Triple seven nine four eight one eight double two. So, um, Shaheen, uh, we kind of spoke before the break uh, about identifying gaps in the market. I'm wondering, is this just a one-off thing that we do? Um, or is it a continuous journey? Because, you know, if you need to cater for the different kinds of um, styles, different kind of needs, customers and so on. So I'm just wondering that this is actually a continuous journey that, that you know, continues. And you mentioned that earlier as well, you mentioned that you still find gaps that you need to continue um, developing and growing in. So tell us more about this journey and how do you manage it? The fact that it's not just a one-off thing. It's something that you have to constantly keep at the back of your mind, you know, with designs and so on. Yeah. So how do you manage all of that? So yeah, this, um, like identifying a gap in the market is definitely not a one-off thing. Yeah, it's a continuous journey. A continuous journey. I think um, once you've identified the gap, and in my case, it was you know Maxi's skirts. I've only really fulfilled seventy-five percent of that gap. Mm. There's that. What is it? Twenty-five percent that's still remaining, and that is essentially like learnings uh, that you get from interacting mm. uh, and learnings from the product itself um what can be done better to make this product mm. you know uh, i mean i don't know uh, last long yeah you know i mean i have for my skirts made sure that it's machine washable mm. i didn't like the idea of having uh, garments where you've got a dry clean mm. that would be too costly for my customer yeah. and I, I had to wear the customer hat and yeah. say to myself can I afford to pay that much mm. after I've purchased a skirt mm. on dry cleaning? Yeah. So I made sure that the fabric that I selected was um, suitable for home washing. Mm. Um, I think that 25% that I talk about that still remains, even after I fulfilled the gap, it's also to do with improvement, improvements from the customer. Mm. So the customer is going to come back and give you feedback. Mm. I was at a event uh, and I got uh, customers saying to me, you know, does this come with a top? Mm. Does this come with a jacket? Has it got a matching? I guess it's um, uh, quite normal for customers to get a bundle, mm. you know, where you've got um, rather than one pen, you've got a set of four, mm. you know, and different colours. Mm. Um, so I guess customers are in a habit of getting that. Uh, I don't offer 
anything at the moment、mm. other than skirts.、Mm. So you know that's that's something that's come to me through grassroots activity、mm. that I've actually taken something and、uh, I've taken from it, and I, I know I, I can do better. I、yep. can I can inshallah、sure. um, propose something else with the skirt. You、mm. know,、um, just to give you another example.、Um, You know, deeper pockets.、Mm. Um, I've created a pocket. Perhaps it's not deep enough for、mm. your latest、um, iPhone or <laughs> you know your new Samsung、uh, yeah. phone that you've recently got. And、um, yeah, that addresses the continuous journey、yeah. gap.、Mm. Um, uh, and I think once you've done all of that, then you can say your gap has been filled. It's like a hundred percent complete. I guess you're saying it. It's It's stagnant at that point. It's perhaps、um, mm. saturated because you've got that many skirts offering that many pockets,、mm. for instance. <laughs> you know, but I don't think it's we're there yet. I don't think. Yeah. Um, but um, I think you also need to diversify. So that twenty five percent does mean you need to go into other markets.、Mm. You need to perhaps、um, focus on.、Um, I don't know.、Uh, Skirts for the gym, for instance, is、mm, mm, <laughs> an idea. Yeah, you know, it, it's diversifying your product,、yeah. so it's doing more than the basic need. Yeah. Um. So yeah, for me, it's definitely continuous. Amazing, love it, and lo- love how you take into consideration so many different things to continue that growth as well. So that's great. Um. In terms of you know, mashallah, you you followed your passion, right? And you created this. And when you mentioned before the break as well, even for the manufacturing as well, you had to kind of look around and you know until you found what you needed. So I'm just wondering here as well: is are there any tips that you kind of kind of advise、um, our dear listeners、um, who have dreams, for example, and passions, but don't know how to act upon them? Yeah, so I think first and foremost, you've got to have the wakal. Yeah, you must have the wakal. You've got to have faith. You know that Allah will support you in this journey.、Mm-hmm. Once you make that decision that you want to make, I don't know, the next best ice cream, or、mm-hmm. you know, offer a service where it helps you f- stop forgetting things. I I'm just improvising、yeah. here, but you've got to have that faith that your your design, your product, or your service.、Mm. Um, once you start working on it, you've got to have that faith that Allah's with you.、Yeah. Um, you've got to be positive.、Um, I think that's the key thing here. You've got to make sure you are、uh, prepared for all the struggles because、mm. it's not an easy journey.、Mm. Um, like you say,、uh, um, you're not alone. You have family with you.、Mm. You've got to make sure you keep that balance,、mm. uh, as you were touching on earlier.、Mm. Like as a mother, a father, a brother, a sister,、mm. um, you know your responsibility to your family. You might have a full time job whilst you're trying to pursue、mm. this dream and, and progress this、um, passion of yours. You've got to make sure you've got the right balance.、Mm. And I think you're not alone in this journey. You've got to know that er- there's lots of people before you that have. You know, decided to do something similar,、mm. uh, and、um, they've been in this cycle before. So、uh, I hope that gives you comfort,、mm. knowing that you know you've got Allah, Allah's support, and you're not alone. I、yeah. think also、um, one of the sensible things to do is probably create like a high level plan.、Mm. Um, once you've got this dream of creating something, or you know. Uh, um, making this、um, product or、um, getting this service out, you probably want a high level plan.、Uh, you you don't want to get overwhelmed with lots of lots of、um, tasks.、Um, you've got to make sure these high level this high level plan has tasks on there that can move around.、Mm. It's just a sequence of activities. That's、mm. how you have to see it, and those sequence of activities have to be broken down. Now, when you break down those steps or、mm. those tasks, it should be broken into smaller, tiny steps.、Um, for instance,、um, in terms of like sales, for me, I would want to、uh, reach out to the I'm、just making this up.、Um, teacher market.、Mm. I know there might be some teachers out there that are really interested in wearing my skirts because、mm. it would suit their 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 their、yeah. their, their, their wardrobe and it will、um, help them in their day to day work.、Mm-hmm. So, 
what you want to do is you probably want to reach out to institutes like、mm. universities or colleges.、Mm. You probably want to do some research, general research on.、Um, Um, you know where these、um, universities and、um, uh, colleges are situated.、Mm. Perhaps you're probably focusing in an area that is um, uh, predominantly um, 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 you've got Muslim women and、mm. men predominantly in that area. So、mm. um, I think it's all about making sure that the, the small steps have been factored in. Research is the first thing. Then you would go about、um, understanding、um, universities, looking at the the ratio and the demographics, as I was saying,、mm-hmm. and then from there it's actually calling them up.、Mm-hmm. You know, you you're going to have to take telephone numbers、yeah. down from their website, and then you're going to have to make the time to actually ring them.、Um, so when、yep. you break down your steps,、mm-hmm. it makes it more manageable. Yeah.、Um, Otherwise, what you find is、um, that task of ringing up universities and selling skirts to them. It, it, that task just becomes a mammoth to you,、mm. and you don't know where to start.、Um, mm. And weeks go by, personal commitments take over,、okay. and because you've got that task just sitting there, and you know you've got to get on with it, 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 it doesn't do anything for you. It, it kind of becomes. Inefficient、um, for you to action that、mm. task because it's so big of a task.、Mm. So you've got to break it down to that level once you've got this high level plan.、Mm. I think that's yeah one of the key things I've learned、um, because you think you're going to get something、uh, booked in, planned in for October,、mm. and actually for whatever reason. Good reason you've got to have the wakal in Allah.、Mm. It doesn't happen in October.、Mm. You know, it happens in J- June next year.、Mm. But the fact that you've broken those steps down and you're able to、um, pick at it and, and get through it,、mm. um, it should give you comfort that you're moving forward.、Um, mm. So I think, yeah, making a high level plan without dates、mm. is is a big thing for me,、uh, and I. Definitely recommend that to anybody wanting to、mm. go ahead and do anything in business in that manner.、Um, like I was saying, there's lots of challenges, so it's good to ask for help.、Mm. Um, yeah. Don't be shy to do that.、Um, you need to accept that、um, getting support is good for you.、Mm-hmm. Uh, like you were touching on earlier, it's good for your mental, you know, well-being.、Mm-hmm. Um, you've got family, you've got friends, you've got people in your network that you don't realise can probably give you a hand. And there's you thinking ringing up these universities is going to, you know, take I don't know four weeks, and actually you've got a friend who could, you、mm-hmm. know, help you out, or you've got you know a sister or a brother that doesn't mind allocating about half an hour every week or whatever, and that that allows you to target well ad- address that. Task、mm-hmm. and target those customers quicker because、yep. you doing it on yourself, it's it's going to take twice as long, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's、um, knowing that there's lots of challenges and you can ask for help,、yep. you can get support, you don't realise it is there.、Yep. Um, I think the other key thing is that、uh, mistakes are good.、Mm, um, I think when you're when you've done the mistake, you. You get really upset, you know. It eats you up, but you've got to understand that mistakes are actually learnings.、Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have known if you didn't do that mistake.、Yeah. Um, so it's all part of the process. It's all part of that journey. You know, that dream, that passion you've got.、Um, it you succeed, but you've got to make a few mistakes.、Yeah. Um, they could be big, they could be small, but it it is what it is. It's just part of the journey.、Yeah. So I think acknowledging that、uh, right from the outset. Also helps,、mm-hmm. um, like you say, mentally. It's、yeah. good to recognise that you're only human. You、mm-hmm. know, you've got so much going on. Y- you know, I've done this before, where、um, you know I was meant to ring somebody up, and I and I missed the slot because something else came up.、Mm. Um, and you know, you've got to go back to that person and apologise, and perhaps you missed your opportunity.、Mm. You know, you've missed your opportunity because perhaps that person got a little bit upset and, and、mm. took it personally, but. Like I say, it's learnings. You know, for the next call that you've got to、mm. um, plan and book in, and actually call up and take,、mm. um, you won't miss it.、Mm. 
Um, mm. So I think, yeah, mistakes are good. Yeah. Um, you're constantly learning. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the continuing... Um, the, the, the learning is continuing yep. throughout the journey. So um, you can also train yourself. Mm. I think that's the key thing. And that's what I've learned with networking. Yep. You you can actually um, do courses that can improve your knowledge in, you know, branding, in mm. selling. Uh, there's short courses out there. Uh, or you could... Um, um, you know, sit with family, friend or anybody in the network that actually can offer you some time to give you some tips on selling, mm. you know, key points that you can then take away. Um, and and essentially you're training yourself, aren't you? Mm. Um, so, yeah, continuous learning is key. And I think you need to be able to accept that. I don't know what to do here. I need advice mm. or I need to speak to somebody to tell me what to do so then I can you know, crack mm. on with the, the task on hand. Mm. Um, again, it's touching on the same point I made earlier about obviously getting help from people in your network. You don't realise how good your network is yeah. until you start asking questions mm. and you start, you know, um, raising points that y- with, with, with individuals that actually give a different opinion mm. or, or steer you in a way. And you think, ah, I didn't realise that, you know, I, I could have done it in this way. Um, so yeah, networking is key. You, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've, I've managed to meet another uh, modest um, um, apparel designer. She's in swimwear, mm. and um, it's great because we bounce ideas off of one another. Mm. Um, when I think something can't work, she proves me wrong. She's mm. like, "No, actually, I did this, and I got this from it." Mm. And she might go to an event or an exhibition that perhaps I can't afford because I'm tight on my budget and she can give me the feedback mm. and you know I, I've kind of like reaped the rewards there from yeah. you know that that conversation because I wasn't at the event but yeah. I was able to get the, the learnings from it mm-hmm. um so yeah learning is a big thing yes. there's lots of learnings in this journey just be ready to absorb it like a sponge uh it's always happening around you you don't realize every single day mm. if you network or conversate with somebody about your your dream or passion that you're designing or you, you know um, creating you realize someone's got something to say and that actually helps you mm. with what you've got to do yeah um I think also, um, again, this was at one of the network events I went to. Somebody said business is trial and error. Mm. A little bit like how he was saying that, you know, uh, mistakes are good learnings. Mm. Um, you're, you're always wanting to perfect things before you execute. Mm. It's yep. human nature. Um, you want your photograph that you're taking for your content on social media to look so perfect mm. that it's something else yeah and that it just really attracts your customer in a way that a standard photography yeah. wouldn't you know yeah. and i think you're wrong to put that kind of pressure on yourself yeah. that's what i've learned when I, whenever i've tried to perfect things i've delayed the task yes. whenever i've tried to post content and i thought oh you know, that plant's in the background. I don't like that plant. Okay, I'm not going to post it. Yeah. That was wrong. You know, yeah. that decision was wrong. I should yeah. have posted it. What's a plant? Mm. You know, mm. no one's looking at the plant. It's all about what you're saying, yeah. what you're trying to advertise, you know, how you're demonstrating your skirt, you know, the way you showcase it and, and you re- really target on those unique selling points about your product or service. Yeah. And yeah, so so um, I think being perfect doesn't mm. help. Just go ahead and 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 post it. Mm. It's trial and error. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you've learned from it. Absolutely. Um, don't make excuses, you know. Mm. I think that's the key thing behind that. Mm. I think also, um, for me, first and foremost, just do it. Yeah. I think that, you know, that tagline is quite important. Absolutely. You know, if you've got, you know, half an hour because you've come home early and you were thinking of ringing up that, you know, salesperson. Yeah. Then, you know, you've got to just ring them up. If you've got your one note and you've got that number, go ahead and pick that number and, and make it your mission to just action that task. Um, right. Don't make it um, a mission and a half. Don't make it into a big task than it needs to be. So, um, 
Yeah, and I think consistency, I think that's the key word. I'm hearing, hearing that from everyone and everyone. Yeah, these are really, really great points. And Jazakallah for the detailed description, the detailed um, 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 tips that you've given there. And I'm sure you've got a lot more to say, mashallah, based on your experience. It's just that because we've reached the end of the show, so I'm having to end here. <laughs> but Jazakallah for all you've shared. It's been really great. And Jazakallah for being here with us as well and sharing the tips, the, um, the the struggles that you've gone through and how you managed to deal with that as well. Jazakallah to our dear listeners for being with us today. And inshallah, we'll see you next week for another show. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at InspireFM Luton.